go for a brand new double zero brush which I love to use now the colour I want to get is my cadmium orange and it's got a little bit a little bit of scarlet lake in there which is really nice just watch out any runs on your metal ferrule just take that off and here we go let's make a start on the painting All right. so we're going to work on the chest now the chest is done through probably two or three layers of detail and this is just going to be the first layer obviously we've already got the uh, the wash down on there and one thing I'm constantly looking at is the direction of the brush strokes and see which way they've got to go now obviously I'm very carefully very carefully looking at the photograph just to ensure that all the directions are the right way because that will help show the form the shape the curvature of the chest just to kind of get it right so let me know what you're up to tonight. Say hi, as I said. Well, I want to hear from you. All right. So hello, Paul. It's me. That's all I want to see, hear you say. Okay. Oh, you can say a bit more if you want to. I don't really mind. Questions are welcome, by the way. If you want to ask any questions about the techniques I'm using, about uh, wildlife and watercolor in general, you're welcome to uh, to ask away. I've got my son by the side of me, Aaron. Say hello, Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Hello. <laughs> Not hello, Aaron. What's he like? He's worse than me. And uh, he will read out your comments for me whilst I'm painting, okay? Yes, we have a message from Scully Ford who says they're from Iowa, USA. Hello, Scully, how are you? Good to hear from you today. It's very, very cold where you are, I know. You told me that one before. So if you're staying warm and dry where you are, and you're getting a bit more kind of painting time just for yourself, okay? So thank you for, uh, for joining me today. I don't know what time is it where you are at the moment, Scully. Let me know. I'm not sure what the delay is at the moment as well. So it could be about 10 seconds, I think. At the yeah, moment with something around 10, 12 seconds. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, something like that. So I'm obviously using my double zero brush, which as I said is a brand spanking new brush. I love it when I get a new brush out. It's one of those moments where you think, ooh, it's a new one. So I do like to uh, get the finest of details. And the good thing about a new brush is that you've got a very tiny point on there. So you can see the very sharp points on the tip of this. And that's what you can use to create all these fine lines. Now, you can do this with a, a larger brush. If you get a, a detailed large brush, a very good quality one, which has got a good tip on it, okay, you can use a, a larger brush like a size 5, size 6, size 8, and get the finest details of that as well. But um, I do find it harder using a large brush. I do like my detailed brushes. And these brushes go down to, I think, the other one I've seen is a 4 zero, so it's very, very tiny, as you can imagine, something like that. But this particular one says double zero. And it's a Winsor & Newton Cotsman Series 111. I don't get paid for them. I buy them, so don't worry. <laughs> I wish I did, because I've said it many times in the past. The paper I'm painting on at the moment is a Bockingford. So it's done, um, it's actually 300 GSM or 140 pound. And it's not surface. Okay, in other words, it's not hot pressed. So capital N-O-T for not surfaced. And the size is a bit bigger than A4, okay? And uh, I'm actually using a standard pad today, which is not glued down on all the sides. Normally I use what's called a block pad, if you don't know the ones in question. And block pads are glued down, so it just kind of saves all that kind of cockling, which happens to your paper, you know, when you, when you put a lot of big wash over the paper, you find the paper goes all wavy, or cockles, and the block pad will still do that, but then it will dry pretty much flat afterwards once it's nice and bone dry because it's glued down all the way around the edge of the paper so if you it kind of saves a lot of stretching as well I do stretch paper but when you're doing something like this it's not too much of a problem but when you are covering the paper with colour then yes it can be so have got any questions there Aaron? Yes, Scully Ford asked what size is the brush I think you just answered Yeah, that. double zero Scully <laughs> and she says their entire state is shut down it's 1pm Oh, wow. I imagine because of the weather. Yeah, because of the weather. I can imagine. I'm, yeah, I bet you're snowed in there. As you can see, it's a double zero Windsor Newton Cotman 111. So that's, as I mentioned, that's the size and the, the make of the brush. But there's other good makes on the market, and this is a synthetic bristle as well. It's not a natural kind of hair or anything that's not ox hair or stable or anything like that. It's a nice synthetic feel, and it's there's less bounce in this brush than there is on a sable brush. So it's pretty good for that. So it gives a bit more control. Notice how, how low down I hold my brush as well. Just, so just above the metal ferrule, I tend to hold it. That way I've got a little bit more control. Not just because I'm left-handed, but because uh, 
have also got a little bit more control over the brush itself. Okay, Aaron? Yeah, we're all fine over here. Jolly good. Right, so I'm going to continue trying to think about the layers on here as well. So remember, if you've got any questions, please from you know ask me away, ask me away, I don't really mind. Whilst I'm online, you've got me for now. You've got me for about 20 minutes today. Something like that. No new questions, but we're getting a lot of likes coming through. Oh, thank you. A lot of likes and love hearts. Well, that's very kind of everybody. It's giving me likes and love hearts on a cold, cold, freezing cold winter's night. Okay, we know a song about it. Was that a, no, it wasn't the song. It was a story, wasn't it? I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> so, yeah, so all I'm working on, I'm thinking with the chest, it's all done in layers, as I mentioned. And anybody on my Patreon site knows, on my Patreon channel, knows that we've got this as a tutorial. But not just head and shoulders, a full bird on a branch. Oh, it's got to sit on something, hasn't it? So that is on our Patreon channel. I don't say my Patreon channel, really, nowadays, because it's ours. So I consider it as a complete group and team of people on there who support one another as well, so it's really good. And on our Patreon Facebook page as well, which we have. It's private, you know. Don't tell anybody. It's private. Okay. So still working with Cadmium Orange and Scarlet Lake. Working all the details as I go along. Now, I'm going to let this dry a little bit more now. And while that's drying, I think what I might do is work a little bit more on the back and see what we can do with that section there. So I'm just going to wash the brush out a minute. In the dirty, then in the clean. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do as well. I'm going to lightly soften down using a size 5 brush just to knock it back a touch, just to give it a nice softer effect just for this first layer of detail. And I'll probably do probably another two, maybe three layers of detail over the top of that. Just to kind of finish it off, you know? Just so we can get a nice kind of layered feel. Okay, light this often. Probably a little bit more down the bottom. And that should do. Right, so everybody, what's the weather like where you are? I know it's a topic which I like talking about, the weather. But what's happening? Is it cold? Is it wet? Is it windy? Is it snowy? Let me know. I want to know. I'm interested. What are you doing on this lovely fine evening? <laughs> Apart from watching me, of course. Right, so that's that for the orange for the first layer. So the next bit I want to do is look at the back of the bird. I'm going to move my camera a minute so for my photograph, which you can't see. So what I'll do, actually, I'll put the main picture on the screen just briefly for you of the finished painting, just so you can see what I mean by the one we do on Patreon, just so you can see the finished products. So we've just got that in the corner, as you can see now. Just down there, there it is, look, just, hang on, I'm going to touch it, oh, oh that's it, yeah. <laughs> and that's basically what we do for, for the Patreon one. I'm just going to put a bit more of the, the blue in now. Now this is intense blue, but also known to a lot of artists as phalo blue. Which is a nice colour fader blue, I do like it, it's one of my favourites. remember years ago, I used to do a lot of oil painting, both landscapes and portraits of people as well. And one of the colours I really liked, especially on the landscape side, was phalo blue. And that could be because I used to watch a, an American artist called Bob Ross. I know if you guys know him, or know of him, you know, is a cracking chap, he really was. Every tree needs a friend. And you beat the living daylights out of your brushes. I know, I remember it well. And I used to watch a lot of his. And it was phalo blue, which which I got the idea from from him, really, using that as one of my main colours. Which, as I say, within the Windsor Newton range, is called intense blue on this particular one. And, uh, yeah, it's a lovely colour, very bright. It's a kind of colour which, it's, it does cover quite well. It's like a semi-opaque colour. So you can cover, but you can also... As long as it's not too wet there to begin with, lift off. I'm just going to use a damp brush a minute. And I'm thinking about these little spots on the back of the bird. So I'll lift a little bit of paint off there. And let's have a look for some more areas. I'm going to do some more there, some little tiny one there, using the very tip of the brush. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and then lift. It sounds like a breathalyzer test, doesn't it? And then a little bit more. Not that you'd know, of course. Not that I'd know, of course. No, I wouldn't, Aaron, no. Somebody have a word of my son here, will you? <laughs> and a little bit more around there. Now, I want to pull these little details off. You know, we can highlight in these using one of our techniques, but I think just for now, just for now, 
will take some of these little kind of sparkly bits off. Kingfishers are amazing birds to watch along the river, they really are. Because when you watch them as well, you hear this this kind of this high pitched single tone whistle. And when you see them, they fly by like a, like a flying light blue dart, they really are. And they're very small as well, very tiny looking birds. And there's a bird hide not far from where we are, the little nature reserve, just a 10 minute drive away. And uh, we do see them down there. And when they perch in front of the bird hide, uh, and they obviously perch ready to do their fishing, it's really, really good to watch them. And you can get some photos as well. This isn't one of mine. This is uh, it's Dave Newby who's done this one. I'll just double check that for you just to confirm that. It certainly is. Hello, David Newby. If you're watching this, thank you very much indeed for your That's excellent photography. Sorry, Aaron, go ahead. Say, we have got a couple of comments. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Scully Ford asked, how long will you let it dry before hitting it again? Before, I'm not going to hit it, Scully. I'm going to let it dry, then I'll gently caress it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tend to let it dry. I'm going to let it dry naturally. It depends on the warmth of your room. That's the thing. If you've got a, a cold room, it will take longer to dry, which actually, in some, some respects, is quite beneficial um, because it gives you a bit more time to kind of work a wash. Whereas because I've got two very warm lights here, the lights do tend to affect the drying time. And if you live in a warm, a warm area, so if you live in a very warm place, especially in the summertime, you find it dry far too quick. So it depends on the drying time. Um, in normal temperatures within my within our house here, I would normally leave it probably about five or ten minutes and then come back. Or I just simply get the hair dryer and give it a blast. And yes, I do own one. Thank you. Anybody who knows the way I look, thank you. Um, so, so yeah, so that's a little bit about drying. What's the other question there, Aaron? Um, well, Pike Sue says, I'm from Central Florida, and our state is participating in winter this year. It's been nice and cool here. I'm not sorry, Pike. Sue. Pike Sue. Hello. <laughs> so that's quite an interesting as well. Very interesting, that as well. So I can imagine the kind of birds you get over there as well. Very interesting, colourful looking birds as well. Right. Thank you, Pike Sue. Scully Ford also says that she loves Bob. Bob Ross, yeah, I know, I know. It's a shame he's not with us anymore. But as a cracking artist, he really was, and such a mellowed out person. I think his son carried on the um, the business, didn't he, doing the same kind of techniques and the paintings. He now sells a lot of his materials as well. Yeah, he? I've actually got some of Bob Ross's brushes saying that. I really have. Um, in my cupboard. In fact, is my palette knife Bob Ross? It might be. I think I've got a brush up there somewhere. Just looking around. So all I'm doing is lifting off paint as I go along, and you can see when you look at my tissue here, this is the amount of paint I've actually lifted off the back of this this uh, kingfisher so far. So that's quite a lot of lifting off. But you can see the effect you get through doing so. You can take even more paint off as well. But this also depends on the, the staining properties of the paint as well. Some paint will stain more than other colours. So bear that in mind. So if you're not sure, always test it out on some scrap paper first. Okay rather than doing some damage to your main painting, which you think, mm, don't want to do that, don't want to damage it. Okay, so I think that's probably nearly enough there, because it only comes down to about here on the photograph. I might just do an one round here, just to emphasize another small section. And I think, using the back of my finger, the orange is now dry, as quick as that. It did take long, did it? But looking at the color, I think what I need to do is tint that down just a little bit more, I think. So I want to add a little bit of white in there as well at some point. So I'm going to get some yellow. Really? Yes, I am. I'm going to get some lemon yellow, which is this one here, to make sure it's to like a milky consistency. But before I do with that, just looking at the colour, it's not quite bright enough yet. I'm going to very lightly dampen down the chest, just using the side of a number five brush. That's all I'm doing. Just the very edge. It might soften this detail a bit more, but if it does, it does. I was looking at the colour, it's just not bright enough, and we just need to brighten this up somewhat. I'm trying to see if that's the same with the head. Yes, it is. So this stripe along the, the side of the, uh, the eye there, the main eye stripe, we'll do the same with that. So I just want to put a little bit of yellow in now, and then when we come back into this one nice and dry, I'll go over the top with some more detail. But it's all layering, it's all detailed layers at the end of the day. That's what basically we're working on. If you do something like this, don't have the colours too thick because if you make a little bit of a mistake 
for as Bob Ross said, happy accident. Then, I know, and then obviously you can come back in and correct those mistakes as well. So always work with light layers to begin with and get darker as you go along. So I'm going to do the same now with the side of the eye, just the eye stripe, and a little bit around the front there as well, just to dampen it down a little bit. Then come back in with the yellow, so the lemon yellow, and then very lightly, barely touching the paper, two airs in air. Just add this lemon yellow in, and that will do while that dries. Now that's definitely brightened the picture up, hasn't it? So that's exactly what we're after with that. Okay, so now we're going to look at what else we can do. So I'm going to work on some of the other areas, probably a bit more around the back hat. So I'm going to go for a darker colour. So I think I know you can't see my mixing palette. Well, you can see that one, but you can't see my colours, which is this lot here. So this is my half pan range, and these are the ones I tend to use on a regular basis, well, most of the time, really. And I tend to use half pans more than tube paints. So if you want to know why, pop a question down below. I'll do my best to answer for you. Um, but I'm going to use a little bit of black. Another thing that not all watercolours use is black. And that also applies to using white as well. So bear that in mind that I tend to use white and black. Well, you know, we are ourselves, we, we do what we want to, and we paint the way that we prefer to paint, and that's my preferred method, using black and white, I know. Okay, so now we're going to get some black mixed up a minute, and add that to one of the palette sections, one of the, one of the wells. And I think what I need to do with that is add some blue. So just wipe that off. This is an old acrylic mixing brush, by the way. Even the paint's worn off the handle there, as you can tell. There's not much paint on there at all. You've got a little bit of silver on there now. And I'm going to pick up some of this blue. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll get some more. And pop that into the black, just to tint it down so it's not just black on its own. Because black on its own can be a bit bland as well. Get the brush will wash out, and we'll come back in again and carry on some more details. Hello, there. Hello. <laughs> We've got Sherry Salonen, I think, says hi from Brisbane, Australia. Hi Sherry! <laughs> All the way over there, hello. How are you? Thank Mal you for watching. Yes. Mal Jenner also says hi. Hi Mal. <laughs> and Scully asks, why did you move from oil to watercolour? Well, <clears throat> um, that's a good question now, Scully. I haven't really got, no, I've got an answer for you. The reason why I moved from, from oil to watercolour is because I found watercolour, very clean medium. Um, because of health reasons, which I'm not unhealthy, don't get me wrong, but I am asthmatic and because of that, using oils requires using turpentine or thinners of some form. You can get odorless thinners, I know, but it wasn't the cheapest of thinners at the time to buy. So because of that, and the smell and the mess and everything else, and also clearing up afterwards, it just got a bit too much really. Um, you can buy the water-soluble oil paints, I know it sounds odd, you can buy those, uh, which I have got a set of those, and they work really, really well, so there's no smell hardly, hardly anything, because it's obviously water-soluble. You're not using turpentine, you're not using uh, any form of um, uh, addition to it if you don't need to. But that's why I switched to watercolors, because it's a very clean medium, very clean, and the beauty about watercolors is that there's no smell, there really isn't. You know, unless you're using latex or you know, the masking fluid. So that's uh, the reason why. Hello. Scully also says that yellow is magic. Oh, lemon yellow is a lovely colour, actually, isn't it? Thank you, Scully. It's, it's a lovely colour to use, lemon yellow. I do like it, actually, because it's a um, very clean, very bright colour. The thing is, with a bright colour, by the way, is that you need white underneath it, i.e. the paper in this case, for it to stand out. I remember... Um, Years ago, when I used to do a lot of fishing, a lot of sea fishing, just off the shoreline, though, not off the boats. And we used to do a lot of floats fishing. I used to make my own floats out of, um, you know, like just, just anything from foam or whatever. I used to spray them white first and then spray it over the top with daglow kind of yellows and stuff. And they stood out. So having white as a base colour will make the colour stand out. So basically, it's the white of the paper that does a trick, really. Okay. You alright, Aaron? Yeah, all good. So. Yes, Erna Egbert says hi. Hello Erna, how are you? <laughs> Thank you for watching. And Mal Jenner also says it's cold up here in Blackpool. Yes, I can imagine it is Mal. I mean, we're down in um, North Devon, 
um, but um, I can imagine Blackpool will be pretty cold but not quite as cold as Scully's place where she is at the moment because it's freezing cold where you are I know so we're, we're actually quite fortunate in, in comparison I, I understand that we don't know what it's like to be cold here do we Scully we really don't so now what I'm doing I'm adding some dark accents within the blue area just to kind of create a bit more depth within this this is nearly dry already believe it or not trying ever so quick because these lights are set quite warm here but I want to just add a few more darks in there using this lamp black and this uh, intense blue just to add those in a few more around there and I think I'll add some more around the back of the head just to that and a little bit more probably I want to form this area around the back so this is like the, the eye stripe or the supercilium or this kind of area here for the for the bird and I want to make sure that this stands out but the thing is when you're going to use white paint over the top which as you know I do which I will be using on this is that you need to have the base color underneath without that the white just won't stand out you know you can't have dark you can't have dark without light you can't have light without dark so you have to you have to remember that so if you want something to stand out you need to put a base layer on first for it to work a little bit more there. We have a question from Marius Bogdan. Marius Bogdan. Hello, Marius. Hi, Paul. How many layers does the final painting have? Well, that's debatable, Marius. <laughs> it depends on on the on the subject for one. It depends if I'm doing it as a video tutorial because obviously the more layers I add, the longer the video. So we have to bear that in mind as well. Um, so obviously, when I'm doing all the video recordings for Patreon. Patreon.com, the Devon artist, I know. Um, when I'm doing all the videos for there, then I have to make sure that they are a reasonable length. So they're kind of watchable, you know. So the layers really vary. So this particular one may have, on the chest you got, let's think, you've got the wash colour first, which is a foundation layer, I call it. Then you've got about three layers of main detail, and then there's any highlight layers I want to put over the top of that. So probably about five layers in total of paint. Uh, just on the chest alone and that's just by using the obviously my double zero brush most of the time apart from the washes which is a size five as I mentioned so so yeah it can vary Marius on on the the amount of layers I use um, but uh, but no thank you very much indeed for the questions very kind of you right so I'm gonna add a bit more dark into the top I just want to make sure this is dark enough at the back of the head the thing with this as well I want to make sure I'm looking at the shape overall shape of the, of the head and we've got to have the dark area, so the light is effectively coming from that direction there, okay, hitting the, the forehead, just the front of the head, that gets dark around the back. So I want to emphasize that a little bit more. This is really dark around here actually as well. But you see from the photograph of the, the finished painting, the whole painting, how dark that can be around there. So it really is a dark area. Okay, we've just got it on the screen for you. It's like magic, isn't it? really is. <laughs> it's like being a magician going live. Going live is something I've been trying to do now. If you Anybody's been following me for, for a long time, because um, we've got nearly 3,000 followers now, and thank you very much everybody for doing so. But going live is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I did try two years ago. Yes, that long ago for those of you that's been on there that long. Um, and it was just all broken up the video because of the fact we haven't, didn't have the broadband speed in order to be able to go live properly but now now through our own doings by using the mobile phone network for our internet uh, we can because obviously we're in a very rural area we can now get a little bit more speed or fast enough to go live so that's why I'm here today on our first Facebook proper Facebook live I know we did one uh, last week but this is the first proper one where I'm actually using two cameras obviously because I've got one here and one here <laughs> so I can switch my hand backward and forward like grease lightning I know so I'm working with the double zero brush again thinking about the details around this white area and then wash the brush out I'll come back in with a size 5 brush this is my Rosemary & Co one so Rosemary & Co I'll just try and get that on camera I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up all the detail on there but that's the one in question so it's a size 5 Rosemary & Co Pure Sable Series 93 and they're a family run company actually Rosemary & Co here in the UK and uh, they do do quite a lot of lovely brushes they really do 
and this is the one I use quite regularly. See, it's got a little nice point on this one as well. So I could do some reasonable detail work with this if I wanted to. But I do like my double zero. So that's softened down. Once that's dry, I can come back in and add some white highlights within this area. And if, if you probably notice one thing as well, I've got my brush upside down. That's better. Okay. So back to the orange. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a bit more red in there. So I'm going to go for the Scarlet Lake. Now, the Scarlet Lake is a lovely colour, quite rich. Just I want to richen it down a little bit more now. Or enrich it a little bit more, not richen it down. Just to make it a bit reddier. And I think I'll go for a little bit of lemon yellow in there as well, saying that. That's better. That's the kind of colour I'm looking for for the second layer of detail on the chest. How long have you been on for? Huh? 27 minutes now. 27 minutes, oh heck. Okay, well I'm going to have to go shortly guys. So if you've got any questions you want to fire at me, please do so now. Now? Please do so now, because I do have to go, okay? It's Hi. evening, and it's a cup of coffee time. Pike <laughs> says, thank you for sharing your fantastic art with us. Not a problem at all, Pike. You're more than welcome. I'm glad that you're here to follow, and everybody else here as well. Without you guys being here, following my work, I wouldn't be doing this, okay? So I do appreciate your uh, spending your time to sit and watch and listen to me rabbiting on, hopefully making some sense. So if you've got any comments, please post them down below now um, because I'd love to hear from you before we leave within literally a couple of minutes, okay? Yes, Mal says she saw a rosemary and co at Patchings and she bought a fine detail brush. Yes, yes, because there are some lovely brushes from rosemary and co. If I get, we are on the, outside, on the view out camera, I'm just going to get my brushes a minute, bear with me one second. Now, when I go to my, this is my old box. Do you have rumours about my old box? One second, here we go. Now in my old box, it's my brand new brushes. So you can see in there, these are all my new brushes. Within here, <laughs> I've got a variety of different Rosemary & Co brushes I have yet to test out. So these are different versions. In fact, I lost the cover off that one. So this is a 2-0 Rosemary & Co, but there's like a Series 315, obviously Series 96, Series 93. Ah, there's so many, so many I want to try out. So obviously on my Patreon site, I will be testing some of these color, uh, some of these uh, Rosemary & Co brushes out. Also, out of interest, all this lot in here, all the different white paints which I've tested out as well. Again, I have to say it's on my Patreon website, I know. If you decide to join Patreon, by the way, make sure you do it at the beginning of the month. Not now, we could join now, but if you wanted to, but you will be charged twice then. So you get charged at the beginning of the month. That's when they take their payments, Patreon, all right? Right, so that will give you some ideas on the sort of brushes I've got yet to test and how they, well, I'll, I'm going to test them out and see how they perform as well because that will be quite interesting to do. But Rosemary Co. brushes, yes, Mel, they are lovely brushes to use and um, I'm well worth investing in some. And they're not too expensive either, actually, saying that. Not like some brushes that you see on the market, I must admit. So this is second layer of detail just going on. Even though the camera's going to be going off very shortly. Very shortly. Remember to share this video if you don't mind. If you can share it for me, I will appreciate it. Because what you've got to bear in mind as well is that every time people share the video, more people get to see it. And the more people that see the video, the more I will want to produce more videos for you and just go live for you. So if you want, to, if you want me to go live more often, please share the video, okay? Um, because that will make a big difference to me and make it worth my while. Not financially, but worth my while just to go live. Just to chat to you guys here on a very cold, very cold Wednesday evening. Right, I'm just going to cover the chest in detail and then we'll call it a night, okay? So I was saying about kingfishers um, that this one, this particular one, you can barely see it actually, just uh, there's a bit of orange there. And this is a female, okay? So this is a female kingfisher. And you always know when it's male or female because the female is the one that wears lipstick. There you go. Did you know that? I bet you did. I bet you knew that, didn't you? Now these fine lines and barely touching the paper, cross hatching all the time. I don't want them all in one way. I am looking at the photograph in front of me on a tablet at the moment. The good thing about having it on a tablet as well, you can zoom into that tablet. You can really zoom into the details. So uh, well worth kind of viewing your photographs on a little tablet or iPad or something like that. 
and have a large photo to work from. Okay, I'll just add a bit more in there now, that's just saying that, just to add in. Now you can see they're slowly coming together, it's still looking a bit flat, we need to shape all this yet, and that will be done with the next layer, where we go a little bit darker by adding a bit of brown to it, and we can then start creating the forms, little, little indentations and shapes within the chest. So, we're nearly there now, time is about up, and I have to thank you all again for following me tonight, and until next time around, actually one question, can you all answer this question for me please, as many people as possible, would you like me to come here next Wednesday night as well? Would you like another live video next Wednesday? Because then, if you do, I'll go live again for you next Wednesday evening. So please put a comment down below and let me know. Watercolour Wednesdays. Yep, it's definitely Watercolour Wednesdays live. So again, that's it. Right, okay everybody, I'm going to say goodbye and good night, And until next week, hopefully, if you all want me here, please let me know. And I'll hopefully see you all then again once once again and we'll work on something a little bit different. So until then, keep them brushes wet and bye bye for now.